Okay, basically we have two be sections be like, left oh, yeah. and then we're done with AP calculus. Woo! There's only two more sections in chapter eight. Instead of doing a quiz and then quickly following it by a test, we're going to finish chapter eight with probably like a quest or a tiz, covering all this material. Um, and uh, we started with slope fields and we're going to transition into differential equations. You've done differential equations already, just in a simpler sense. So today we're going to dive deep into differential equations. Then we're going to segue from today's lesson into the next lesson, which is one of my favorites where we look at real world examples and how uh, you may have studied it in other classes like growth and decay. Yes? Uh, Why is Giselle having a meltdown? <laughs> It's awesome. No, it's like it's awesome. It's overwhelming. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It deals with a lot of not happy things. Well, we can deal with sad things and happy things. The sad things would be like the spread of disease, zombie invasions, radioactivity, uh, the spread of uh, cancer, that kind of stuff. Or we can look at the happy things like uh, making a lot of money in investments. Um, how quickly medicine gets into your system and affects your system, those kind of things. But we'll get to all that later. First, we have to talk about the separable, differentiable, or differential, differentiable, <laughs> uh, separable differential equations. The most important part of this lesson, and the thing that will kill you if you forget about it, is the word separable. And I'll show you what I mean at the end of the slideshow. Okay, so we're going to use the initial conditions to find a particular solution of a differential equation. So when you did the slope fields yesterday, you graphed a slope field representing all the possible <coughs> solutions. Occasionally, you were asked to draw a particular solution through that problem. With separable differential equations, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to use equations. And you should also be able to drive a stick shift car. Who can drive a stick shift car? Is that it? One of you can drive a stick shift car. How'd you learn? In Germany. Oh, uh -huh. nice. Yeah. yeah, there's not a lot of other, uh, you don't have much choice over there. Most cars are stick shift right now. Excellent. It's a valuable skill to have. I would highly recommend it. It's really valuable. If you're in Germany, it's kind of like get away from a killer. <laughs> and the only car you jump into has a stick shift. Exactly. You're not going to sit there and be killed because you don't know how to work a stick You didn't you did learn it in Germany like in the mountains or anything, did you? No, that, oh, that's, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. On a hill, that's, that'll get it. Anyways, um, here we go. So we talked about this already. We're solving differential equations. We get general solutions. What does a general... Oh, well, I already have it up there. General solutions have the plus C on the end of it. Specific solutions, no plus C. Okay. And sometimes you start with a general, you take some information, you solve for the specific. This is easiest to understand if we just dive into it. But before we dive into it, I'm going to show you an example of a differential equation. Differ I keep saying differential. Differential equation. So at the top there, I have y double prime minus y equals 0. I'm wondering if my function is sine... Does that satisfy that differential equation? What do we need? Y double prime. Y double prime. What is y double prime if y is equal to sine? This will be a blast because by now you've probably gotten the minus sign screwed up. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. 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 What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine. So we know that y double prime is negative sine. We know that y is sine, so when we plug all that in, it turns out, nope, that's not right. Negative 2 sine x is not equal to 0. However, what's a derivative of c e to the x? By the way, Jacqueline, what does c represent? The general equation? Oh, wait. What does any c represent in an equation? If you're not pro, you're, when you get out of jail, you're called a X. The bad guy in Star Trek II was uh, Wrath of Khan. Khan, good. 
Um, if you're not sitting, if, if I don't sit, I stand. So what C represent? Just a constant. Good, good. Constant. Good. It's a constant. So what's the derivative of C e to the x? C e to the x. The second derivative of that would be C e to the x. The third derivative, and I know you're all really good at recognizing patterns, what is the ninth derivative? I'm so proud. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. So yes, that is in fact a solution to that differential equation. Would you need, so like for y prime, would it be c and c? Why not? Why would it? Why would it be plus c? Because We're taking derivatives, not integrals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. OK, so let's look at an actual differential equation. <coughs> so I've got that. It's a cubic. Now notice dy dx means I have some function. When I took the derivative of it, I got this. We know how to go backwards, but we're going to take a different approach to this, and this is where we're solving a separable differential equation. Meaning, these things, this dy and this dx, you'll recall, or you don't recall, are called differentials. Since we're doing a separable differential equation, what do you think I'm going to do with the differentials? Separate. Separate them. Excellent. So here's the standard approach. DX's go on the right. DY's stay on the left. Anything with an X goes on the right. Anything with a Y goes on the left. You'll notice in this first equation, there is no Y. So all I'm going to do is multiply both sides by DX. This is a little embarrassing to admit, but I have made a mistake. And I can't, and I can't blame Ever for this. I did not put parentheses on there. I have shamed myself. I do not blame you if you decide to transfer. Yeah, Chris, can you help me out on that one, buddy? Um, your mistakes don't define you. Wow. I cannot tell you how much better I feel now. And like a little yeah, stalker on Chris. I'll take care of this. Okay. Okay. So I've got this weird little dy floating on the left. I've got this weird little dx floating on the right. Stand up, sit down, five, five. No, sorry. Um, what do I do next? I want to get rid of the dy and the dx. How do we do that? Integrals. Integrals. The integral of both sides. You are going to go through this process ad nauseum. Do you know what that means? No. Yeah. It's Latin. It means so much until I throw up. Right. Separate the differentials. Take the integral of both sides. What's the antiderivative of dy? Y plus c. And what'd you say, Dan? Why did I call you Daniel? Danny? That was weird. <laughs> I never called you Chris. I've never called you Danny. Daniel. I'm the first name. No. Well, maybe. I don't remember. I'm going to go. No, I totally got. I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, okay. So the antiderivative, because we don't have limits in integration, would be y plus c. You could take the antiderivative of the right hand side. Yeah, 1 half x to the 4th minus 3 halves x squared plus c. So you'll notice when I take the integral of both sides, I'll have a plus c on both sides. And that gets to be too confusing. So what we're going to do is we're not going to add a plus c to the left-hand side. Leave it off the y. We're going to only add it to the x side of the equation. Correct. Now how is that legal? It's not. But we're just going to cut out the middleman. In other words, if I was to do the left-hand side, I'd have a plus C. I'd have a plus C on the right-hand side. I'd move the C to the other side. By the way, what's C minus C? Zero. 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 C. C. It's constant. Remember, no matter what you do to it, it's going to be C. Everything minus is 
C. But C can, can be any possible constant. You handle that, Liz. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Just argue quiet. Okay, here we go. So we get that. So again, let me review that because it becomes a big deal. Technically speaking, mathematically, Danny was right. When you take the antiderivative of dy, you get y plus c. When I take the integral of the right-hand side, I get plus c. But then we're just going to cut out the step of subtracting c from both sides to get c again and just say, OK, we're only going to put a c on the right-hand side. Good. And we're done. That's it. Okay. So how is this different than anything we've done in the past? It really isn't, except now we're getting this general solution. And later on, we're going to find some particular solutions. And later on, it's going to get a little, a little bit more complicated. This is about as simple as it gets, because when we separate the differentials, we get this pretty equation of dy equals all this x stuff. It would be nice if it stayed that easy. OK, questions so far? I only need 1 plus c. Good. What's the point of this? Separating the differentials. Why do I need to do that? Because we're solving for the function. We're basically doing an elaborate antiderivative. What? You'll see. Oh, goody. Here we go. Hey, this was one of the things on the uh, little activity you did. Yeah. 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 What did it look like? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Wait, no, inside out. I think it's an inside out negative. negative. Uh, What's an inside yeah, out it's circle? It's <laughs> <laughs> I think we put it. Like the, yeah, we put the non negative one. No, that was, that was the positive one, right? The negative oh, one was the positive one. All right, well, let's see. Like all all right. Now, you'll notice also that there's something different here. In the equation, or in the problem, I told you that y1 equals 1. That's a fancy way of saying the point 1, 1 is on the original function. Okay, just to be sure that we don't screw this up. If it's y of 4 equals 7, is that the point 4, 7 or the point 7, 4? 4, 7. Okay, good. I knew I could count on you guys. Okay, we don't care about that. We care about 1, 1. We're going to get to that later. All right, here we go. Separate the differentials. Now, you might say to yourself, self, I'm going to take the negative sign with the y and move it to the other side. That's okay. You can do that. Others of you might say, hell no, I'm leaving the negative sign where it is with the x. That's okay too. Everybody gets a choice. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> when you separate the differentials, you should get, whoa, thought I had the problem here. Now I actually have to work. This sucks. <laughs> y dy is equal to negative x dx. That's what you had, right? Okay, what's next? Antiderivative. Maria? Mm -hmm. No, the other one. What's the antiderivative of y dy? Oh, well done. You're on a roll, Maria. What's the antiderivative of negative x dx? Negative 1 half x squared plus c. Oh, so happy. Well done. Now you're saying to yourself, self, we're done. Yeah. Because we're looking for a particular solution, I know information about the function, and I know that when x is 1, y is 1. Let's plug and chug, shall we? For sure. If x is 1, we get 1 half, or it, and x and y are 1, minus 1 half plus c. c is equal to 1. I hope I did my math correctly. Good? You all agree? Excellent. So this becomes... 1 half y squared equals negative 1 half x squared plus what? 
Now you're saying to yourself, we're done. Right? What else can we do, babe? Um, isolate Y. Say again? Like isolate Y, like get everything in terms of X, whatever. Sorry. How do we do that? What would you do first, babe? I would multiply um, the right side by 2 first, and then I would take the square root of that. So in other words, you're going to multiply everything by 2? Yeah. Okay. Hold on, let me get rid of this. We're done with that. Go away now. Do, 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 do. Change colors. I'm going to work in blue. So y squared is equal to negative x squared plus d. And then the last step was what, babe? Um, take the square root. Okay. Here's where things get a little bit crazy. Oh, but wait, we're not done. It can't be both plus or minus. It's got to be one or the other. Which one is it? And by the way, the answer to the question is so simple that you're going to be amazed. Why plus? Because you're feeling it? Because the value is 1, 1. Beautiful. Nice job, Andrew. Y is equal to the square root of negative x squared plus 2. To reiterate, in case you didn't hear him, the reason it's positive is because our original equation has y being positive. When you have a problem where you take a square root, square roots are plus or minus in equations, you have to decide which one you go with. If there is no initial condition, then you can stay with the positive negative. If, for instance, I didn't tell you that y of 1 equals 1, then you would have that and solve it for y being plus or minus the square root of, yeah, 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 you got to see in there. Pregunta. So I solved for y, and I got c equals, and then I put the numbers in, I got c equals 2. So my final answer ended up being, up, ended up being correct, and I just got lucky on this one? Yes. That won't always happen. Questions? That doesn't seem so bad, right? Okay, and it's not really that bad, it's just going to take some practice. So what I wanted to show you next, can I move on, are we good? What I want to show you next is an actual AP question involving these types of problems. Okay, so this is from 2006. What, were you, what year were you guys born? 2005. So much. So you were all one when this was? Oh, I was two. You were two. Oh, Bryce. Bryce had his big boy pants on in 2006. Nice. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, that's what he did. That's what he did. That's what he did. Okay, so the reason I wanted to do this was because I want to not only show you another example of a separable differential equation, but also show you how they graded to try and drive a point home. So first of all, look at the slope field. Well, let's back up. They give you a differential equation. They tell you x can't be 0, because x can't be 0. Then they ask you to do the slope field. Well, we did that yesterday, but you'll notice they only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points to do that on. And they tell you in the directions, hey, just use these 8 points. Okay, go ahead, I'll let you play with that for a second. Feel free to chat with your group, but you draw your slope field, see how it goes. Seven more to go. Yeah. We're just talking. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
it's an over. Yeah. 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 slope field, right. and like contrary to what we did yesterday where you had 40 million little dashes to draw, this one they just ask you for eight, and I'm assuming you're going to plug and chug to get that. Okay, that's part one of the problem. Part two then says, now solve this particular differential equation. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. Work with your group and see if you can come up with that final equation. Then I'll show you what the answer key looks like and talk a little bit about how they grade these bad boys. Can I offer a hint? Yes. When you're separating your differentials, you're going to leave these puppies together as one unit. Okay, carry on. Oh, 
or because it's you guys get one for it. See, does it work to Oh, no. I'm sure you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
You'll recall from pre, pre calc Yes, solving natural log equations. Yeah. yeah. So if the natural log of x is equal to 7, then you do the e2 trick. x is equal to e to the 7th. So they did the same thing down there. <clears throat> the same thing down there. Okay. This next step requires a little bit of explanation. Uh, let me get rid of this mess. Eraser. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So when you multiply the same base, it's the same thing as adding the exponent. So instead of this, I could write it as x to the 3 plus 2. Okay. And I'm going to make a point in a second. If I go down to this guy, this is e to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus k. That's the same thing as e to the natural log of the absolute value of x times e to the k. You with me? Yep. e raised to a constant is just a constant. That's how they get from the circled step down to the next step. Well, I also assume that you realize that e to the natural log of x is just the absolute value of x. Okay, because the e cancels out the natural log. Solving this equation, we get our final value of c being 2. Solve for y, and you get your two answers there. Let's not obsess too much about this. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make a point about how to solve these problems. Riff. Why didn't they just plug the given points into this equation? Because if you, I mean, it, you do, you get Well, your C value and your K value can be different. They did it that way so that you end up with that nice C value at the end of, of 2 instead of... So you're saying, why don't I just come up here and put in negative 1? Positive 1, right? Is that What's our point? 1, negative 1 or negative 1, 1? Negative 1, 1. Okay, so if I put in a 1 there, I would have the natural log of 2. Equals the natural log of... One. Right. I would have done it that way because you're still going to get C at being two. Right? Okay, I probably just screwed up my math then. So why would they do the I don't I don't know. Because they like to show off sometimes. Okay, right. We can like not be able to yeah. Like, yeah. I plug in the the particular solution information as soon as possible. So I would have done it the way you're describing it. Um, I wouldn't have done all this stuff. I would have just plugged in one, is it one comma negative one? Here. Because you should still get C being two. So you wouldn't get points off on the actual not. No, and that's what I'm gonna show you next. Okay. okay, so this is the grading. As I mentioned, every free response question on the AP test is worth nine points. Okay, so they gave you two points for your slope field, which I'm sure when and if a problem like this shows up on the AP test, you should knock it out of the park. It guaranteed one or two points. Then all of this other stuff, all of these seven points come from this stuff. However, I want to point out that little sentence. Zero out of six if you don't separate the differentials. At some point in this problem, You've got to have dx on one side of the equation, dy on the other side of the equation. If you don't, and it doesn't matter what you do after that point, you will get 0 out of 6. Okay? So, again, it was in a flashing red thing earlier in the slideshow. You have to separate the differentials. Okay, so what did they do? They gave you a point for separating the dif differentials. They gave you two points for the antiderivatives, obviously one point for the left side, one point for the right side. 
One point for including a constant of integration. Even if you take the antiderivatives wrong, but you stick a plus C in there, you're going to get a point. Did you plug in one negative one somewhere in the problem? Yes, then you get a point. And did you end up solving for Y? Next step, maximum three out of six if you don't have a plus C term. Again, it doesn't matter what you do right or wrong. If you don't have a plus C, you're going to get one point for separating, one point for taking the antiderivatives, but all of these others go away. This is unusual. They don't normally ask you for that. They just ask you to solve for the, um, what you call it, the differential equation. That's just a throw on just to make it, things a little bit more interesting. Almost every example I've seen of this on the free response portion of the AP test follows this format. Here's a slope field. Now they have a slope field. Go solve this equation. Question? How many free response solutions are on the AP test? How many questions? Yeah. Six. Six. Four of them are non-calculator. Two of them are calculator. Okay. And when this, was this calculator or non-calculator? This would be non-calculator. For each of those, your time allotment is 15 minutes per question. They don't break it down that way, but when they give you two questions, you have a half hour. When they give you four, you have an hour. They're all worth nine points. Nine times six is 54, and that counts for half of the test. The other half of the test is multiple choice. Part of that is, is um, Calculator, part of that is non-calculator. It's not equally split. Okay. And it's not exactly 54 problems. There's what's called a multiplier. We'll talk about all this later when we start the review. It's going to be fun, though. While we're on the subject, I will tell you, of six problems on the AP test, this happens every year, one of those questions, you're going to sit down and start reading and think it's written in a different language. It's not going to make any sense whatsoever. So part of the review process is I'm going to teach you how to turn on your BS meter and start trying to weasel a couple points out of a problem that doesn't make any sense. It happens all the time. What will also happen is that you might have, like Tori, for instance, might rock and roll on separable differential equations, but she can't solve a um, related rates problem to save her life. Okay? Whereas uh, Patrick... Loves related rates. He's great at them. If one of these pops up, he's going to cry. Okay? So part of this is going to be a balancing act of being able to do the best you can on everything and also accepting the fact that at some point you may just have to say, I don't know. And then we start to BS our way through it, try to get one, two points out of it. When we first start taking AP questions in class, the first one I give you is going to be amazing because the most you're going to get on it is like two points out of nine. That's okay. Okay, we'll talk everybody in off the ledge, and then we'll move on. Questions? Now, what we're going to do uh, on today's Wednesday, on Friday, we're going to start talking about growth and decay. So we're going to play with separable, separable differential equations and get back to. I'm sure you've seen this guy, right? Per equation? No. Shut up. Yes, you have. Don't tell me you haven't seen the Purdy equation. All right, I'm going to have to go crack some skulls. What's that? Yeah, population growth, uh, investments, spread of disease. Well, the difference, the difference for us and when you did this last year in pre-calc is that in pre-calc, you were given this magical equation, and then you just learned to play with it and solve problems. In here, we're going to talk about where that comes from. You're actually going to derive this for individual problems. It's not as bad as it sounds. It's actually pretty interesting. Okay? But that's, that's for Friday. Questions? We're good? That is a bunch of students in a parking lot doing a slope field. Could we do that? Sure, we can do that. If you'd like to go out in the parking lot and do a slope field, I'd be happy to. Fire something up for you. Take a field trip outside. You can see, notice, notice we have all the dashes, and then what's going on here with the uh, with those four? What are they? Yes. Also known as? Hyperbola. 
<laughs> general slope field particular solution in that slope field. Right. Yeah, they kind of know what they're doing there. They're not messing around. Beautiful. Um, okay, discard. Stop this. Yeah. Hold on.